going on, everybody? It's Coach K in the building, baby. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Warm welcome to the PT Hustle in here. Warm welcome to my newcomers. My name is Kyle Rice. They call me Coach K. I hope you to get the highest score possible on the MPTE in the shortest amount of time. You're rocking with the best on Challenge Wednesday. Yeah, that's what it is. 6.30 p.m. Eastern. It's where we go over a question just like this to kind of help you out with your MPTE strategizing. You get me? But you got to do me a favor. Lock in that answer. What you got? A, B, C, or D? We don't even have no letters on this one. I'm going to have to draw in some letters. <laughs> a, B, C, or D? Flexion extension. Right rotation, left rotation. Put it down in the comment box. Yeah, it's... To, uh, stick around to the end of the episode. I'll get your new Challenge Wednesday title holder as well. Does that sound good? Is that good for you? That's good for me. <laughs> Woo! 10 seconds. 8 seconds. Woo! <laughs> Who's in here with me tonight, man? Who's in here? Cole, what's up, baby? What's up, baby? Byron, what's good? We got Sarah in the building. Seth, Megan, what's up, team? I love that. All right, lock in those answers, y'all. I'm ready. I ain't playing with y'all. I'm ready. Y'all ready? Okay. All right, let me stop messing around. Let me cut that music off. All right, so let's go ahead and get to it this week, man. I'm super, super, super excited about this one. Um, you want to know why I'm super excited? I'm super excited because I'm, I don't know how many times I've, I've gotten a, an email, a uh, Facebook message about this right here, like VBI and what's the proper way to test for it and all that good stuff. And so we're going to knock that down tonight. All right, y'all? Does that sound good? Okay. For this week's clinical file, we have Martin, and Martin is treating a 45-year-old male with recurrent neck pain and joint hypomobility before initiating end-range cervical mobilizations. The therapist would like to assess for vertebral basilar insufficiency to check the left vertebral artery the most effective position to place the patient's head and neck is so we have a flexion we have b extension we have c right rotation and we have d which is left rotation let's make this happen so we go up to the top we have martin and Martin is treating this 45-year-old male with recurrent neck pain and joint hypomobility, right? So that's a pretty straightforward statement. Makes sense, right? We got somebody with recurrent neck pain, joint hypomobility. Most likely we're talking about the cervical spine. Cool, pretty straightforward. Let's go over to the next sentence. It says, before initiating end-range cervical mobilizations to address that hypomobility, the therapist would like to assess for vertebral basilar insufficiency. Baby, oh, you better assess for that. You better for, assess for that. You're you going to be cranking that lawsuit if you don't assess for that B, VBI. So I, I, I like this. It makes sense. We want to assess um, for VBI. If you're not familiar with it, um, there is the uh, vertebral basilar artery right? And it's made up of the vertebral arteries, all right? And they join together to make the basal artery. This applies the, the back of your brain. I mean, your cerebellum, your brainstem, your occipital lobe. It's really important. And if a person has a VBI, I mean, this, this can cause some really permanent damage, if not death. All right. Um, so, you know, if there's like arterial hardening or if there's some type of plaque buildup, it can block blood flow. And then we lose what? We lose blood flow to the brainstem. Don't we need that for functioning? Lose blood flow to the cerebellum or uh, to the occipital lobe as well. So we definitely want to make sure that we assess for this because we do not want to cause this person harm. OK, now, as I continue down the question, it says to check the left vertebral artery the most effective position to place the patient's head and neck is what so bottom line what is this question really asking me 
Um, it, it's asking me, well, do I know what VBI is? But the second part is for the left of the tebral artery, how do I assess this? What position do I need to put my patient's head and neck in in order to assess the left of the tebral artery? That's what it comes down to. And for those of you on the podcast right now, let me go through the answer choice again. We have A, flexion, B is extension, C is right rotation, and D is left rotation. All right? So we already know what VBI is. We just spoke about it. And one of the major questions that commonly comes up in my email box, people who message me are always like, man, what position do I put the patient in in order to restrict blood flow to the left or the right artery? Like what position do I have to put the patient in? So let's go through it. A says flexion. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you right now, like flexion isn't really a part of our vertebral artery testing. Think about it for a moment. Think back uh, to orthopedic class. This is one of the the like red flag testing that we do before we get into any down and dirty mobilizations or even in range mobilization type things. Um, we want to check the vertebral artery, right? So we do the vertebral artery test. What position do we do that in? You should be saying, well, typically the patient could be sitting or supine, okay? And then what we do is we bring the patient's head into full cervical extension, head and neck extension. We side bend it and then rotate it, okay? And that's supposed to be putting a lot of stress through the vertebral artery. Nowhere in there did you hear me say flexion. Flexion's not even a part of this, so I wouldn't say that it's the most effective to check the left vertebral artery. Does that make sense? So can we eliminate that one pretty straight straight off? Okay, so let's go ahead and eliminate that. Let's look at B. B says extension. I like it. It is a part of reducing blood flow through the vertebral arteries. It can, all right? But it's not specific. Yeah, it's a part of the test, but it's not specific to one side over the other. And so even though you may like to choose this answer, it's not specific enough to the right or the left. And so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate it. Let's continue down the line. C says right rotation. Okay. All right. Let's think about that. So if I did right rotation, then which vertebral artery would be stressed more? Let me say that again. If I did right cervical rotation, head and neck rotation, would that stress the right side more or the left side more? This is where most people get hung up. I'll tell you this right now, that when you rotate your head to the right, you actually stress the contralateral side more. I'll say it again. When you rotate your head to the right, you actually stress the contralateral vertebral artery more. So if I'm doing right rotation, that's gonna stress the left vertebral artery. I like this answer choice. I like it. And you may say, well, wait a minute, Coach K, come, how does that work? I mean, if I rotate my head to the right, isn't that compressing a lot on the right side? And I would say, yeah, when we're talking about the joint, it does a lot of that. When we're talking about the actual joint itself, the facets, yeah, you get some compression there. But when we're talking about the vertebral artery, when we rotate your head to the right, it actually puts a stretch on that left vertebral artery. And that stretch actually decreases the space on the inside where the blood glows through. All right. And, and, and that's what gives us a good test for the left vertebral artery is right rotation. I like that. Okay. Let's continue down to D. D says left rotation. And like we were just saying, if we do head and neck rotation to one side, it stresses the contralateral side more. So if I rotate my head to the left, which vertebral artery is getting stressed more? You should be saying the right side, the right vertebral artery. So D can't possibly be our answer here. It's actually opposite of what we would want, leaving us with our final answer, our best answer of C right freaking rotation 
All right, there you go, there you have it. This comes straight out of your McGee textbook where you can learn a bit more about this vertebral artery test. Also, you may see it in there known as the quadrant test as well. All right, so you can read up about that. But definitely, if I wanted to stress this, this left vertebral artery the most, put this down in your notes. What I would do is I would extend, side bend to the right, and rotate to the right. Let me say it again. If I wanted to stress the left vertebral artery the most, I would extend, side bend to the right, and rotate to the right. That's going to put the most strain on that vertebral artery and then potentially cause an occlusion. Cool? So let me add a little extra piece. For those of y'all here with me right now, I think this is very important because you don't just want to know you just you don't just want to know the testing. We also need to know what would this patient present like if, let's say, this test was positive? What would this patient present like if they came into the clinic with a VBI? So the way that I've learned it, and I found that this has always helped me, is I've learned it by the five D's and the three N's. Can we go over those real quick? The five D's and the three N's. So five D's, okay, and for those of y'all in the car right now or in the clinic, you might want to pull out that piece of paper when you get to where you can not wreck somewhere, all right? Um, and let's go through these. So one of the D's in the five D's is dysphagia, all right, or faulty swallowing or difficulty swallowing, difficulty eating. They tend to aspirate, right? Um, another one is diplopia or double vision dysarthria difficulty articulating or speaking um, drop attacks like sudden dropping to the floor or blacking out is your fourth d and your fifth d is dizziness okay so those are the five d's right there and for those of you who are here with me i'll kind of write these out i don't want to take too long uh dysphagia diplopia diplo i always have a trouble saying that word that's double vision there dysarthria all right difficulty speaking or articulating speech, um, drop attacks. Yeah, it's where the patient like blacks out on you. And then last but not least is dizziness. Okay, so those are the five Ds. Let's talk about the um, the and. Okay, a lot of people forget the and in the middle. Five Ds and three Ns. What does the and stand for? Anybody know? Think about it right now. Think about it right. Okay, it is ataxia, y'all. Ataxia. And we're talking about gait right now, okay? A taxi of gait. So that's what the A or the and stands for. And then the three ends. Let's go over the three ends. Okay? The three ends are going to be nystagmus. Most of us are familiar with that term, right? Nystagmus. Okay? What's another one? You can say numbness and tingling. I'm just going to put N slash T. All right? Numbness and tingling. And the last one is nausea and vomiting okay that is the last cool so five d's and three n's you need to know these signs and symptoms they can come up in your question they can come up on your pete your therapy at whatever it is most of all the npte and you need to be able to pick this up out you know off of your question and be able to say like yes this is a vbi problem five the five d's and the three n's put those down in your notes now i never like to leave you just with basic explanations, basic signs and symptoms. I want to take, always want to take you a step further. For those of y'all on the podcast right now, what I did was I put together a very nice vertebral uh, basilar artery insufficiency cheat sheet for you that's talk about the testing, it's talk about the rules of the testing, the procedure, but also um, what we can expect if we rotate the head in certain directions and all that good stuff, okay? I compiled it for you nicely. So go into the show notes, click the link, in there and you can get it but for those of you here live with me right now thank y'all for tuning in was that a good one i i thought it was a good one but now we just laid it we just laid it flat so now you know going into your next exam in order to stress the vertebral artery what do you have to do you rotate contralateral right so if i rotate to the right it stresses the left if i rotate to the left it stresses the right all right, so make sure that you got that locked in so we can get that right on your next exam. Now, we got to go through who our new 
Challenge Wednesday title holder is, y'all. I ain't playing with you. I ain't playing. Who is it? I'm going to give it to you in three, two, one. Oh, Megan Victoria. Let's. Hey, 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 hey. Woo. I'm so proud of you, girl. Yeah. All right. So she is a 10 time challenge Wednesday title holder. That's another 100 bucks for you, girl. Man, you making it rain. Making it rain. <laughs> I love you, Megan. Congratulations, baby. I'll reach out to you soon to get you your cash money. For the rest of you, tune into the next episode next Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. Right here. Right here. As Coach K always says, keep learning. Stay committed. I'll see you on the next one.